children here we can pray for and, and send out to Kids for They're Christ? Already over there, They're already over there? Yeah. Okay, we got babies here. Lift up the hands of the babies. We got a baby here, a baby here. Lord, we pray that you bless these babies and bless the kiddos who are here. Just thank you for the families. Thank you for our Sunday school teachers. Um, thank you for this church family. This is a unique opportunity for us to get together and to talk and to listen and to pray. So I pray that you'd lead us and you'd guide us by your Holy Spirit. Even though it's a little bit different, it's just a, a gathering of church family. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want to turn your attention to the Word of God um, in Proverbs chapter 3. It's in the, uh, it's, it's in the worship guide. Um, and this is a selection I picked for today because we need wisdom as a church. Amen. We need wisdom. Yeah. Wisdom is what we all hear from God. We all share what we're hearing from God. Um, we move past. Welcome. Come on in, everyone. Feel free to grab something to eat or drink on your way in. Get up anytime during the service. Yep. Um, I'm going to turn us to Proverbs 3. Okay? It's about wisdom. My child, remember my teachings and instructions and obey them completely. They will help you live a long and prosperous life. Let love and loyalty always show like a necklace and write them in your mind. God and people will God and people will like you and hold you in high esteem. With all your heart, you must trust the Lord and not your own judgment. Always let him lead you, and he will clear the road for you to follow. Don't ever think you're wise enough, but respect the Lord and stay away from evil. This will make you healthy, and you will feel strong. Honor the Lord by giving him your money and the first part of all your crops. Then you will have more grain and grapes than you will ever need. Turn the page. My child, don't turn away or become bitter. When the Lord corrects you, the Lord corrects everyone he loves, just as parents correct a child they dearly love. Let's just pray silently and allow these words to soak in. Thank you, Lord, that when we turn to you, you speak to us, we listen to you, you help us choose the right path. In Jesus' name, amen. I'd like to invite the choir to lead us in worship now. Adjusting, you know, and doing 
Do you have them so beautifully in this room? Kids coming in, and kids have already gone to the to the Sunday school room. Thank you. Good to see you there, Jessica and Catherine. Good to see you. Yeah, welcome. Um, so, yeah, yeah, no worries. Kids can stay or go. Whatever you guys, whatever your parents want. Um, just a few items from our worship guide. Um, dads and grads, we're celebrating graduates. So in two weeks' time is Father's Day, so we traditionally celebrate dads and grads on Father's Day. So if you have someone graduating in your family or a good friend or a neighbor, you want to celebrate them, you can bring them to worship on Father's Day, but you can also submit their name and their details on one of our friendship cards. I know we have friendship cards in the back there, right? We have little sticky notes even on the tables today. There's an offering box kind of hidden over there. Um, so we encourage you to participate in the, uh, letting us know what's going on and also the offering today. We have sign-ups. So the sign-ups in the back there for Kids for Christ. Over here, everybody sign up. We, we need people for the month of June. So the month of June we have we have uh, teachers signed up, right? Yes. But we need, we, what we need is some people who can move around a little bit. It's okay. We need also people just to sit there and, and watch, but, but it would be great if you were able to help out a little bit and be in the room during June. It looks like in July we may put KFC on pause and just go with family services in here. We'll have to see how that goes, but we need to just make sure we have the right staffing in order to have Kids for Christ, okay? So we'll let you know about that, parents. We know that's really important uh, to you. Um, on on. Sunday, June 25th, we have Bread of Life, which means we go downtown and we serve the homeless and the hungry. And then um, we have baptism and church membership opportunities. If you want your kids baptized, or if you want to be baptized, or if you feel like you want to explore what it means to be a church member, please write all that in a friendship card or send us an email and make sure we get that. Okay, so we'll, uh, we'll, be, we'll be going into, into that time um, of baptism and church membership pretty soon. Now I want us to pray for our ministries and our offering, and then we're going to sing hymn number 482. It's called Sanctuary as we prepare for our time of conversation and prayer. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for these ministries. Thank you for the offering that you uh, have us give today. We pray that you would just bless it to the community that receives the benefits of this offering, and let it all be to your glory. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to invite those who are able to stand, just please stand for a moment. Six seconds. submit. Um, and, and again, this is a conversation for everyone. We know that some of you are not official voting members. We're not here to vote. We're here to talk and listen to you whether you've been here just a few weeks or whether you've been here for, uh, for dozens of years. So, um, so Paul, why don't you go ahead? Okay. Um, well, I've, I'm the speaker clerk of session and uh, actually all I ever wanted to do was sing in the choir. But uh, I, I, I don't know quite what happened here. <laughs> uh, I'm an elder and, 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 and clerk of this session, and uh, I uh, started bringing my daughter to this church when she was four. She's twenty. She's twenty-one now, so that's 
That's what brought us here. I grew up in the Wainini Presbyterian Church, which was founded in the 1880s by Senator Thomas R. Lard. And uh, then that church merged with Westminster, and we were there. And then uh, I started attending here. So anyway, this morning, uh, the session just wants to have, uh, there will be no voting, uh, no business done today. We just uh, wanted to let you know what's happening, what stage of the process we're in. And um, we've been meeting, of course, uh, as an, on an as-needed basis, which has been uh, many more meetings than our usual once a month. But uh, this is not business, of course, as usual. This is, you don't just put it, Put a church up for sale in the Presbyterian Church. It's a, it's a it's a process, a long process, and we've been um, communicating with the Presbytery through a task force that they established to especially for our situation, our relocation, and possible sale of property. Um, we are looking uh, the. Uh, again, the task the task force. We've been communicating with them. Uh, Bev Fretheim and and I are the are the liaisons to the task force. So anything the session or the pastor wants to ask the task force, they they communicate through through us. Um, our pastor, of course, has brought us various scenarios and ideas, and he's been working uh, with great energy and and uh, 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 to. Uh, help us move forward. He's been bringing things to us and we've been considering them and we just haven't, we haven't landed on anything yet quite, but he, he's been working tirelessly and we, we should all appreciate it very much. So and if you're looking at your sheet here, if you see there number two, we're making, we're making an intentional change. Well, what does that mean? Well, we, we are gonna, we're gonna face what our situation and we want to be the ones that define our situation, not the change that is happening to us. So we we want to um, we want to be the agents of that change, not the other way around. Not that our our situation gets so um, as, as to where we really don't have any say in it anymore. We're we're out of money and and we don't have any any way to go forward. So um, we understand we, uh, understanding uh, intentional change. If you look at the little diagram down below there, discomfort, which is our situation has put us into a situation of discomfort, our financial situation, and our declining attendance, and all, all of those things that you're all very aware of. So from that discomfort, how how do we move forward? What, what is our vision for us moving forward? And then when we're satisfied with that, taking our first step. And that's all we mean by intentional change, just, just um, being the agents of the change, not it happening to us, but rather we, we making the change on our own. Sure. Uh -huh. We want to just allow time for popping in with questions or concerns. What do you understand? I mean, some of you are brand new. You might be for here for the first time that we're proposing to sell the church property. Um, but that's, that's really where we are. We've been moving towards this for the past year. But does everybody understand this whole equation is really important? That discomfort, how many of you are experiencing discomfort with what's happening with the church now? And yeah, you know, it's, it's not comfortable. So, that's what creates us to, to sort of say, okay, what's the vision you have for us, God? And then as we move towards that, we start taking these steps. And that means we're making intentional change instead of just letting stuff happen for us. It's kind of like, it's like a family. Today we were talking about being a church family. If your family needs to make some sort of change, you need to downsize, get a smaller property or whatever. I mean, you can just sit there and let it happen to you. Let the bank take away your house or whatever. Or you can make some changes, okay? And that's what we're looking towards doing. But we want you to write those notes down because we want to 
we want to have discussion around the tables and, and conversation in this room. So please go ahead and, and write any notes that pop into your head on the, on the post-it notes. You can submit them to some and say, hey, would you say this for me because I'm not comfortable talking, uh, whatever you'd like to do. So go ahead, Paul. Yeah, absolutely. And if you want to uh, raise a hand if you have a question, there are members of the session uh, among you, and uh, we'll stop at any point. Anybody wants any clarification at all? <clears throat> so, um, Maybe I could, uh, sure. Yeah, uh, we don't have a mic that goes back that far, but Blaine, I can repeat what you say for, for yeah. people. Yeah. I've got a lot to say. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, Speak well. I'm about the sale of the church, so this has been going on for um, over a year. Blaine, do you want to just come on up front? Um, that would be really helpful. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Perhaps you could introduce yourself. I'm Blaine Sidesinger, and uh, I've been a member for a while. And uh, first of all, I'll probably speak for everybody. We're all so grateful for Ted, um, for his service to the church, uh, his um, commitment, dedication, great pa pastor. Ted, in my heart, all right, I'm so appreciative. Yeah. Um, with that being said, um, so this was brought to my attention about a year ago, and this scenario had played out already up to Santa Barbara at uh, Grace Lutheran Church, a church that had been in existence for over 100 years, and due to similar circumstances that we have, um, their decision was to gift the church to the uh, the count in the city, and they built low-income housing on it, and they built 53 or 58 units on over one acre. So, but those were two-story buildings. So, if they use this property, and this is something as an option, I think, if we could give this whole property to the city, and they can build a hundred low-income housing for seniors and military um, citizens, which would impact, say, a hundred families. I think that would be awesome um, as an option, or maybe sell this church to an existing church, maybe at a lower price. Uh, I just hate to see this organ go to waste, you know, because I'm sure it's worth hundreds of thousands of dollars if you had to replace it, but no one wants it, I'm sure, or it'd be little money. And also, I was thinking, this congregation is small, and our budget is $280,000 for basically 50 people. So I think I would feel better because I think, that I don't think this church is viable anywhere else. Um, I don't think people, I think everybody would find a church to go to, uh, but I, I think creating a new church just for us, um, not, try, not trying to find the right word, but it just seems selfish to spend all that money just for us. So we're spending $5,000 about per person just to keep this place going. I would feel better to give $5,000 to Rescue Mission or uh, Food Share and find another church. Um, because eventually that's something all of us are going to have to do. Um, I really don't know <clears throat> if a new church was opened at River Park, how much of the congregation would go there? You know, without firm, without required, um, just to hear, not just, because that wasn't good, but, but you know, for, 
<laughs> you know what I mean? You know, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, so anyway, I think there's other options, not just to sell it, to, you know, give it for low-income housing, um, or sell it to another church at a reduced price, or if we did sell it, maybe take those funds. I don't know if the Presbyterian with this let us take, I think it's for sale for, it's been appraised for like five million. If we take that five million and just say, have, uh, you know, a just. Big vacation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we don't meet in Hawaii. No, just take that five million and just say, well, we're going to give two and a half to rescue mission, two and a half to food share, which would just, for myself, I would rather do that than and find another church, then, uh, you know, do the, sell it, and, uh, anyway, that's okay. just as another Thank thought. You, oh, sure. Thank you. We're, oh, by the way, we're, we're so happy to have Blaine back with us. Blaine's had a bunch of health struggles. Um, so, so happy. Yeah, yeah. And Sherry's back. Yeah, we're happy to have Sherry back, too. Go ahead, Paul. Okay, well, uh, one of our... Uh, uh, oh, go ahead. Is there another church interested? Um, we've got some... On, on page two, we're going to come to some of the options. So why don't we... If we could uh, kind of go through page one, mm -hmm. all right? Some of the stuff we learned on our weekend. Maybe that'll help set the stage for what the options are that we're considering. But yeah, we'll get to that. Uh, yeah, so this really is for to report to you what we did in on the Congregational Weekend with Maggie Harmon, who's uh, trained uh, in uh, uh, helping people transition their churches. Um, Frank, she came from the Presbytery. She's also a lawyer. It was a very, very professional uh, uh, presentation. And she led us through workshops. Some of you were here for both days. Some of you were here for one day. And uh, we learned a lot about our church and just kind of examined our church and and what um, what it would look like going forward in the in interest of developing a ministry plan which would uh, uh, guide us going forward. Um, yeah, congregational responses. Yeah. So, um, why don't you go ahead? Yeah. Pastor. So, just to summarize, the congregation who was here responded. Why are we here in the weekend? I'm on the first, second column of page one. To know where to go and to find a way to feel at home. So there's this sense that was in the room and that we as leaders sense among this congregation that we want to continue as a congregation, right? So that's the basic thing. We want to continue to be together, to find ways to be together. Not to disband, um, but to be together. So the starting point is, why are we here? We want to find out where to go and find a way to feel at home. And this goes to the whole issue of, at the bottom of page one there, do we feel comfortable? No. But can we feel safe? Do we feel safely in the hands of God and will we feel safe going forward? Just like moving to a new house or a new town or whatever, we can feel safe even though we might find discomfort. Discomfort is kind of driving us to make a change. And so, why are we here to feel safe about the future of the church? Can we feel safe even though the changes might feel uncomfortable? All right, so we're going to be doing some uncomfortable things. Can we still feel okay moving through those times of discomfort to a new place of safety? And then the congregational values. Do you want to just list the congregational values that were... Um, so, uh, you know, we tried to come up with what is our what is our church about? And what are what are the values? So, we've identified four: spiritual growth, seeking connection to a higher purpose. We see them there: compassion. We felt we were a, a compassionate church, feeling sympathy and care and concern for others. We are a helping church. Uh, we care for others and help meet their needs. And we are a friendly church. We feel that friendship is one of our our values as a church. 
And I want to ask, are there other things that you would name as a value of this church that's important to you as someone who comes to this church? What's important to you? What qualities? Yes. I personally like the message that we share with us each Sunday. So the Sunday message. I appreciate that. Um, Sherry? So the compassionate ministry of this church. How many would agree with that? This is a compassionate. Yes, a lot of hands go for that. What other values do we see here? We're a praying church. Praying church. Thank you. Praying church. Yes, Debbie. Music. Music. I think we're so blessed with this couple. So blessed with this couple. I think we mean Connor and Michelle. So, yes. We are, we are, blessed, for, we are blessed with them. Um, anything else that stands out? Yes, Shonda. Non judgmental. That we're a safe place for people to come. Just come as you are with whatever you think, right? Anything else that stands out? I think we have a good ethnic mix you don't see in all churches. A good ethnic mix. Amen to that, right? I think we're becoming more diverse, which is awesome, right? Um, okay. And then. The starting purpose for a purpose day. There's a, and if you look on the walls here, we put some of them up. This represents a lot of the work that was done. And this is by you guys. This is not me, you know, saying this is what you should think. But this is um, the groups that were here wrote down. In fact, one of the exercises was for, one, for the tables. Imagine that you're a new person here. What do you see? What do you experience? What's your response going to be? And so we kind of put ourselves in others' shoes. Um, and then we, Maggie helped us crystallize a starting purpose for, idea for a purpose statement. You see at the bottom of page one, FPC exists to spiritually equip people to share God's love. How does that feel to you? How does that feel to you all as a reason we exist? And if we stopped existing, this would be missing from our community. We exist to spiritually equip people to share God's love. How do you feel about that? Is there something you'd add to that, something you'd take away from that? If there are other words, and again, I know most of you aren't comfortable speaking in public, I get that. Write them down on the post-its, you can leave them on the table, put them on the boxes, other words that you think reflect First Presbyterian Church, or any concerns that you have. Um, this next part, um, we did. We took a SWOT analysis. Doesn't mean we swatted each other. We did strengths, weakness, opportunities, and threats. Okay. So under strengths, and this is where we want your help, because Bev's back there writing down additional stuff that you guys say that go beyond what the congregation who was here said at the same time. Strengths, faith, worship and prayer, community, offer, friendly, offering support internally and externally, ministries, Bible study, children's groups, worship. In summary, a friendly community that enjoys sharing worship and meals. What else, and just shout it out, I'll repeat it, Bev can write it down. What else are strengths of our church? Music. Music, okay. Music, yes. I like the range of age group. Range of age group. Very, very young. We've been so blessed to become actually a little bit younger in the past few years. Isn't that nice? We talk, we think of ourselves, we say, this is an old church. Well, it's also a church that's getting younger. And we, we thank you, keep up the birth rate. Okay, <laughs> keep up the birth rate. <laughs> okay. yeah. Moms and dads, dads are cringing, moms are smiling. Keep up the birth rate. Keep inviting your siblings to come. Uh, what else? What do you guys who are in the younger group uh, find as strengths of our church here? Think it of. Sharonda and Cynthia and Christian. Anybody want to name some things that you find as strengths of our church? I'll say the it's reliable. Go ahead. Reliability. Reliability. That's a good one. Can you expand on that? 
We got yeah, 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 Christian, what do you what do you mean by um, Mike Ron, if you can give Christian the mic, what do you yeah, mean? I'm going to make sure it's working. Yeah, it's working. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll put the reliability in the sense of whenever you think you're going to church, there is a church. When you think of a message, there is a message. Like everything that uh, it's around uh, a church community, you can find it. Mm -hmm. So it's reliable. Reliable. Who else? We'll move this out here a little bit. Anybody else want to say anything or write something down, hand it to somebody else? More yes. strength of the church? Let me. Your congregation is very sincere. Sincerity. People are. Uh, Genuinely, yeah. sincerely interested in each other, enjoy each other's company. Did you ever find that you go to a, not a church or a presentation and people are just like putting on a face in a way? We don't, I don't get that here. I don't get that at all here. We didn't, we, we, and today wasn't even that well organized and somehow we just said, those of us here said, we're kind of a family, we can do this. You know, we can do it. Ron? I like the fact that the church wants to give and does give whenever they see the need. I think that's a big part of what we are trying to do, help the homeless, the feeding pro processes, uh, many, many different things. Yeah, and to Blaine's point, we think that in selling the property, if the city buys it, um, we already, some of you know, we're trying to develop the back part of the property and we, they can already get like 90 something units there. So maybe over 200, 250 units they can put in here if the place is developed. But we'll get to that later. But we want to give and share with others. Yes. Yes, said, you know, we have a very, we have a very strong deacons group. Um, people have been very generous in donating to us and we, um, we help people that you might not know anything about the help that we give to people. It's done, you know, privately and respectfully. And so that's one of the things that um, our deacons, we have deacons families so that there's certain people within the congregation that we, we are assigned to, so to speak, and we keep in touch. We send birthday cards, Christmas cards, calls, and all that stuff. So that's another part of the the unity of the congregation is through the deacons. Thank you. Yes. Um, do we want to move on to weaknesses? And this is where we are. We, we kind of put where we are right now as a major weakness is that if we allow the fear of the new and unknown to prevent action. So, and then under that was fear and lack of outreach. What do you think about those as weaknesses? Do you feel those as weaknesses of us? Do we feel, anybody feel afraid of the future? It's okay to admit it. I feel a little afraid of the future. I feel afraid, who doesn't? Even in, the, in your own lives, but as a church, we feel afraid. But what, what we said was, if we allow it to prevent us from acting, what'll happen? Yeah, if we can't allow that, right? As, else, yeah. as the treasurer, I see it in numbers. Mm -hmm. And what he just, Pastor Ted just said is, as the numbers get smaller and smaller, as the donations drop off because the congregation disappears, um, we have come, we will come to a point, as the treasurer, I noticed this, that we cannot pay the bill and we'll have to dissolve without us having any control over it. And, and to provide a further exploration of that, uh, we feel like we've got a couple of years, if that, to do things as we're doing them, so we have to make changes, and we're looking at changes on, in different ideas. Um, but from what I see in the people in this room, we don't want to just let stuff happen to us, do we? We want to make intentional change, because we're a family, and... You know, so that's that's what we're looking at doing. Okay, so opportunity. Yes, Sharonda. I have a question uh, about weaknesses. Yeah. Uh, Sharonda, you said um, 
I have a question about our, our witnesses and the lack of outreach. If we do decide to go to another church, how is that going to improve our outreach and will the same situation happen? Okay, that's a good point. So the question is, if we go to a different location, how will that improve our outreach? One of the things that, that we've heard and we understand, and see if you agree with this, that being in a room this size or slightly larger is going to help us with feelings of community and able to attract people and help people feel comfortable. It's very difficult to be in a large, even though we love our sanctuary, it's very beautiful, it's very difficult to be in that sort of room, have someone walk in, see all the empty spaces and go, oh, what's going on here? Second thing is, to, to, as a priority for our options, to put ourselves in a position where we're visible to the community and, and, and people feel like they can access us. Sometimes just being in a building that's dedicated to being a church, you know, and, and churchy looking and feeling is, is some threshold that people wouldn't necessarily want to cross. And then also, um, in our, when, when we do our ministry plan, we'll be looking for ideas, we've got some already, to, to more effectively engage with others, right? Um, and also to develop stewardship. I mean, frankly, you know, it's not only that we've seen people pass away and become incapacitated and move away as they get older, it's also that the generations that are coming in have not been trained to really be a part of an organization that needs their financial assistance. And so to realize that all of us are part of this, and that, so, so stewardship training I think is a big one, is to get everybody sort of on board with, okay, this, is this your church? Is this our church? Yes, it is. What does it take to support it? Let's all pull together. And we realize the, new, the younger generations are much more financially strapped. Middle class is shrinking. We, we, and that's a whole new reality that we gotta deal with. Uh, there's a question in the back? Someone raised their hand, but I uh, Debbie. I've noticed because I watch it on uh, Facebook and one of the things that breaks my heart is that the first five pews are empty and I think that's kind of a bad reflection on our church because they don't see how loving we all are if the five pews in the front are empty people are kind of like looking at the church going what? We tried roping off the pews one time, but people just moved the ropes. <laughs> I, know, I know Presbyterians like their particular seats. Yes. I appreciate that. Yes. But really, <laughs> I don't know. It's just something that I personally noticed. Um, okay, opportunities. We're realizing that we're, we want to stay within the, the, the hour because our musicians you know, need to go on and we just want to keep everyone. We, we promise not to keep you here for more than the worship hour. So um, opportunities, that, that, that changing, and here's what to Sharonda's question, changing the relationship to our facility in order to focus on the community, not upkeep. There's a lot of energy in this church that goes, is focused on upkeeping. What's going wrong with the buildings? You know, how do we keep them up? We think we can operate with a much smaller footprint and, and reach as many or more people. Um, relocate to a facility we can use differently, visibility, you know, planning new ministries that are a result of our new location, um, and campus partnerships. I think that, I don't think that refers to college campuses. I think that means if we, if we can, our first choice would be to have a facility that's 24 seven hours that we rent and we can use, and then we can eventually buy something that's 24 seven hours, so that we can bring some of our partners with us uh, on our campus. Any other opportunities you want to highlight? Do you want, do you want to explain what partners means? Partners means explain like, partners. We, we, have, we have a church that meets over here on Sunday mornings, we have another church that meets in the afternoon, we have the Channel Air Chorus here. So depending on the facility that we move to, we have the opportunity to continue to network in those very valuable Partners. Unfortunately, our Boy Scout troop has diminished, is closing, but the blessing is they're going to be able to donate a lot of their equipment and stuff to the to the flourishing troop down in Port Wainimi. So that's that's a, that's an exciting thing. Um, and then threats again being restricted by fear, 
fear of what could be. Well, if we do this, this might not happen. You know, or God might not provide the people. Or if we do nothing, then we can't function financially as we are now. And, and believe me, we've cut back a lot over the years. We're looking at more cuts in the fourth quarter. Um, so I want to turn it back over to Paul to talk about the last column. And this will generate some discussion, I believe. The last column, our task. Yeah. What we need to get done uh, in order to prepare to move. Um, so uh, the Presbytery requires from us a ministry plan. They, they want to know where we're going, going to go, how we're, what it's going, our church is going to look like going forward. And that would be our ministry plan. And we are in the process of, of developing that. We actually developed one, and then after our meeting with you, we kind of threw it out and started over. So uh, we'll be doing that during the summer, and we will present that to you in September, and then a vote to uh, 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 of, of, of the presbytery to um, to allow the sale. And we ex expect to re relocate in uh, about a year's time. So maybe sometime during the summer of 2024. There are the options there for the sale of a property. You can read them. Um, I won't read them to you, but um, we have, as a session, voted to list the property for sale. It has not been listed for sale. We want to meet on Tuesday to discuss what we've learned from you all here today. So if you have something to say, but you just don't want to say it in the meeting. That's fine. Write it down. Uh, speak to one of the elders that you see here. I, sorry, Bev, but I gotta say, many of you know Bev Fretheim, and you and you talk to her, and go ahead and talk to her because she tells you everything. She tells us everything that that uh, she gets. So communicate with us, please, so that, that on Tuesday we can get together again as a session and have more more of a feeling for what. You all think. Just go over the, um... Yeah, so there they are. Uh, to, uh, what? Question? Just a thought. Um, maybe uh, you could send out uh, letters to all the members with just a question. Are, would you support the church? Would you attend a church that was relocated, say, to River Park? That is, that, that is, and that's what we're trying a very to get basic as a question that we need an answer to. That's what we're trying to get as a session in the context of this meeting. Hearing all this, mm -hmm. we want to get a, a a sense of that. And if you want to write something on your card, if you want to say, "Hey, I would attend a church that's not located here," all we know is that it likely won't be relocated here. Um, although this is our once we get it on the market. We can open ourselves up. This is the exciting thing about getting on the market to groups that might want to come in and then buy the property, but then allow us to stay here or work out some kind of partnership. So that's what we'll do on Tuesday is, is vote to list the property because there is actually a church that's interested in coming in and, and, and buying this place. Our, the numbers are a little off from what we understand. They don't want to pay as much as it's valuable. So we want to let our broker negotiate and work on some of those options. But it, it happens, it's, I don't want to get your hopes up. It's our first priority. I think it would be yours too, wouldn't it? To be able to stay here, right? To be able to stay, to not to have to move. How many of you like moving? I don't like moving in the first place. I mean, moving this is tough. I would love to be able to stay here. So that's why it's option one. And then option two is to do what Blaine's talking about. To, to, to the, the property would go to a city or a developer, but it wouldn't be donated. They have the money to buy. They can buy the property, and that allows us then to formulate our plan to start the church in, in a different location that's not 850 Ivywood. And then the... Can I have a question? Yeah. Have you, have you found... Are there particular locations that are conducive to this move? To this move? Yeah, Paul, you want to go ahead and talk we, about it? We've kicked around three or four different ideas, uh, uh, and our broker, even uh, uh, potential broker, uh, uh, looked at 
looked for us at properties, but nothing is nothing is settled with us yet. More than likely, I think that pastor's idea of us nesting, that is going somewhere where we can feel safe with another church for a while, and then something, a property opens up or something like that, but more than likely what, what, that, that is what would happen unless something comes up and we would have we would have the money to do yeah. various different things. Well, the good news is that with the trend in our country towards remote work, there's always office space and some in really good locations and some at affordable prices to us. And that would be a first choice for us to have a, so, to, so not to share with another congregation at this time. So that's why it's higher on the list to go 24 seven, a property that's ours that we can bring our people with us and our partners with us. We love our Church of the Nations and our Eiffel Church and our Channel Labs course. We love to bring the whole operation with us. Then the rent they pay us can help us defer the expenses that we have. So that, that's why nesting is further down the, the line. Loretta had a question. Well, it's not a question. It's a very nervous reaction to all that's been going on in the last few months. Robert and I are having a very difficult time going, having a opposite reaction and opinion to what is happening. Mm -hmm. We do not want to sell the church. We do not feel that it's appropriate to sell the church. The church belongs to God. The money that has been invested over all these years came from a lot of people besides just who's here now. And we shouldn't take it and run and go build a church that probably might not succeed. We can't draw people here with a facility that is beautiful and is a church. How can we draw people to a facility that has nothing to offer but four walls and a piano? I mean, I'm exaggerating, over-exaggerating, but why are we not drawing people now to a facility that can offer them so much? And we think we can go away and go someplace else and draw a whole bunch more people and make a larger congregation than we have. It seems like we should be able to if we can grow a congregation anywhere, it should be right here where we are. And why not? It just yeah. seems like we should stay here Amen. Yeah. and do the best we can to make it go. I just, yeah. we're having a very hard time with this. We really are. We understand. And, but we come from a long range of years. There's a lot of years behind us. But there's a couple of several other people that I'm looking at here that have been here a long time. And how they feel about this, I'm not sure. And if they feel anything like I do, I wish you'd pick up, speak up right now so they could take your feelings back to session. And that it not be just one or two people that are speaking up about this. Because right now it's all about selling it. It's not all about trying to make anything work. So if you have any opinions, speak up right now. And don't be quiet. Thank you. Thank you, Loretta. Absolutely. Well, well said. There's a lot, you know, I don't want to affirm, there's a lot of emotional, spiritual, all kinds of investment in being here in this property. That's, that's a part of the heartache of, of what all of us are feeling. Yeah, it really is. Uh, Karen Arias had a, a question up front. I've heard of an option of turning church over to Presbytery, and I know that that has been discussed. Um, can, can someone explain what that's all about? That means that we cease to exist as a congregation, and then they sell the property. So the, really, the difficulty is to speak into those who don't want to sell it. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, I'm one of them, is that if we don't, it's a question of do we want to continue to exist as a people? even if we can't exist in this building. And if we just want to exist in this building for as long as he can, it might be just a couple of years, and then we'll cease to exist. But am I, am I getting this right, Paul? Or how does the session feel? Well, we have, we've voted to, to try to move on. And uh, we, 
that exactly what would happen would be the presbytery would they would take over the church, but they, they wouldn't run the church; they would sell it, and uh, and uh, we would be scattered to the wind. And I understand completely. I I don't want to sell either. Nobody wants to sell. We wish that people were coming in the door, but they just don't seem to be. And I'm, I'm I I wish I knew the answer to why such a beautiful facility can't can't draw more people. Uh, why? Wait, wait for the mic, hold on, Sharon. I used the mic incorrectly. All right, so I just have a question that I'm sure you've addressed, but in dealing with this, I think all of us love our church. We love our church. We love our orchids. We love our choirs. We love our people gathering together. We don't really want to find a way to move, but we may be at that point. But have we investigated things like starting a charter school here? Yes. We have investigated that. That fell apart. Okay. Reaching out to the military. That used to be a big part of the con of the younger congregation were military and their kids and their kids Sunday school looked totally different. You know, it, it just seems like things like that, which I'm sure you've investigated and aren't possible, but well, well, that's how I would be thinking if we're really trying to. Well, one of the things that will happen is when it gets on the market, and we know this from talking to others, that the word will get out and that there might be groups that will want to come in and partner with us or buy it to be used for something else besides tearing it down and using it for housing. Um, so we've had been in discussions with a school, we've been in discussions with a church, we're at the point now where we feel like we need to get our professionals on our side um, and, and talk with the, and, and get the word out to others, because we just have our limited, you know, viewpoint. Now, Lois, did you have something you want to say? Ron, Ron's running. I have never seen Ron move that fast. I think it's a loss to the community. You know, <laughs> my dial -a ride person, when I told him why I was coming, he said, oh, that church has been here forever. And I, I do think it's a loss to the community. I don't know, I mean, I'm not technical, so I don't compute. But I'm certainly going to write a letter to the editor, although I'm probably the only person here who gets a newspaper. <laughs> uh, I think the community, if they knew how awful it would be to lose this church, yeah. it's an architectural, beautiful place to worship. No, I mean, the people are the most important, of course, but it's a piece of art, I, and it brings you close to God. I, every time I was able to be in choir, I looked at the window with <laughs> the dog. I would just praise God, and it was a place where I felt so close to God, and it breaks my heart, and I think it breaks the hearts of many people in this community. I think if you're right. If they only knew, maybe there are, been, I mean, I'd be willing to donate my cost for a hearing aid, which I really need, to this church. Don't do but that. I couldn't do that every month. Don't do that, yeah. <laughs> All right, folks, um, so is everybody clear on the, just before we get back into, we're going to finish up with worship and communion. Um, kids, you can go back to your folks now. We're almost done. Is everyone clear that our first priority is to find a way to stay here? We think, though, that getting the word out by having our property in the market might be a pathway to doing that. But we realize that that's probably the least likely option. You, and we, that would be to find a user. That would be someone who would want to use the property, and then we can negotiate with, with the user to be able to stay here. 
What we can't do is continue to run the church without the value of that money, the proceeds when they're invested. We can't do that. So sell to the city or private developer, and that would kind of go along with what Blaine was saying. Only we'd sell, we'd have the, we'd have the option to continue and to be together as a community and bring all those strengths with us somewhere else. Um, we would want to, first of all, be in North Oxnard, because that's our area. Whether we have a 24-7 facility or can nest with another church, that's the second priority. And the, la the third priority could be to fall back and nest in Port Wainimi for a short while. Okay? So that's kind of where we are. I um, think we need to... Go ahead. At first we were, but then we realized it wasn't going to be feasible. It wasn't going to be financially feasible. The timing would take too long to develop that for us to then get the proceeds to continue as a church. We would run out of money before then, and it, it just it, it's, it's just not feasible. So that's why selling the whole property is what we're looking at doing now. Okay. And last couple comments, uh, Debbie. I have a question. Has anybody ever tried to contact both bases? Because I, my understanding is both of the chapels are shut. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of people that are on those bases that don't have a chapel to go to anymore. Yeah, and that, we'll take that under advisement. Bev, make a note of that. Yes. Others? Okay. All right. Where are we in the worship service now? Communion. Communion. Okay. Let's, we're going to sing a communion song together. And we're going to go out by celebrating what... You know, the, the, this one sacrament, baptism and communion, just symbolizes who we are as a church and what we believe in. Does everybody have a communion cup? If you need a cup, raise your hand. We have sinned, we have broken your command. Tasted fruit from the enemy's right hand. We have labored to cover up the damage that we've done, but our sins are too great to overcome. This table is for sinners. This one is for
Praise God for the kids. Good to have you back, kids. I'm glad this is a church that celebrates communion with children. That is so awesome. That is awesome. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to God, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and take and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The supper was over. He took the cup, gave thanks to God, gave it to his disciples, and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's all say together Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Make us while many one. Make us, though broken, whole. Make us, despite death, alive. And so we pray, come Holy Spirit, come. I invite you to take the bread. The Corpo de Cristo, the body of Christ. La Sangre de Cristo, the blood of Christ. As the people of God, let's join together with uh, a final song, Jesus Messiah. Are you doing Jesus Messiah? Yeah, go ahead. Let's stand together if you're able. He became sin, who knew no sin, that we might become. His righteousness, he humbled himself and carried the cross. Love so amazing, so amazing. Thank you. 